Hello! So in this video, I'm going to be building my first PC. So I have to put this disclaimer at the beginning that I am not a computer hardware expert. This is not going to be a tutorial video, but more of just like me walking you through the process of what it's like to build your first PC, especially coming from someone who had zero knowledge about building a PC beforehand. Yeah, building a PC is terrifying, so if I can do it, then you can do it. I will say it was kind of difficult finding the ideal parts for this build during this time because a lot of things, the GPU especially, was either out of stock or sold out or way overpriced. So it was difficult, but I did it. Um, if you have any opinions on the parts that I got or how I did this build, then please feel free to let me know. I'll list all of the parts that I picked down below in PC Part Picker if you're interested. The theme of this build is really just getting the job done. <laughs> so I do plan on upgrading things in the future. There's like um, some things I skimped down on, for example, I didn't get a hard drive and just opted to get an SSD. Those are things that I can always upgrade later down the line. And so for this build, I was like, let me just get, let's get it running. <laughs> if it turns on and it can run things, I'm happy. All right, let's get into the build. So all of the parts arrived on time, except for the GPU, which I'll talk more about later, but for the motherboard, I went with the MSI B550A Pro, and I'm just unboxing here, as you can see. <laughs> so this is where I remember that you should take your socks off when you're building a PC in order to avoid static buildup which can affect your parts, but also I have hardwood floors and so I'm not sure how much it would really affect things, um, but I figured it's better to be safe than sorry. There she is. For the CPU, I went with the Ryzen 3 3100. I kind of wish that I had gotten the 3300X instead, but I did follow the rule of thumb where the CPU should be at least half the price of your GPU, so it should be fine. It's fine. And so when I was installing the CPU here, um, the arrow that you're supposed to line up with the arrow on the motherboard is actually super small. Like I thought it would be more noticeable, but it was like a dot, and so I remember triple checking it was in the right direction before finally just putting it in. Okay, it's in, it's in. I'm in. Let's go! So now it's time to take off these brackets in order to install the Wraith cooler that comes with the Ryzen. I do actually plan on getting a different CPU cooler in the future, but I decided to install this one temporarily. And the Wraith does come with this pre-applied thermal paste at the bottom, but I heard it was a hassle to remove after installation if you ever wanted to switch CPU fans, and so I decided to wipe it off with some alcohol. Although this did take quite a bit of effort, and I feel like I kind of wiped off some of the metal. I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, I had no idea that thermal paste looked like this, and I really hope that's not too much. Again, I don't know. And I actually remembered here to screw in a crisscross fashion for even screwing.
Okay, so for installing the RAM, on my motherboard manual it says that both sides of the thing right here should snap open, but they lied. You can see me trying to force the other side open, which, don't do this, it doesn't open. But on the manual it says both sides should open, and so I was confused, and I think they lied. Anyway, I was really scared of putting this RAM in because in so many videos they said that it should click in and the side should snap in neatly and it didn't click when I put it in. So I kept thinking that I would put it in the wrong way when there's really only one way to put in the RAM. Yeah, so if the RAM doesn't click in, it's fine. And you might have to push the side tab back with your finger. So this is the case. Not too much to say about this case, to be honest. Um, other than that, I just like how clean it looks. Yeah, I didn't really care for aesthetics for this build. I just wanted it to be pretty simple and clean. So no fancy like RGB or anything. They really make it look so easy in videos. They're like, just slide it right on in, you know? And here I am, palm sweaty. So for the SSD, um, as I said earlier, I didn't get a hard drive for this PC yet and I heard that it's better to get an SSD over a hard drive if you're going to get one or the other, um, ideally both, but for now an SSD gets the job done. Now that the motherboard is installed into the case, it's time for the power supply. And I've seen some people do this step first, like install the power supply into the case and then plug it in and everything and then put in the motherboard, but I don't really know if there's a correct order to things, so it's fine. Remembering to put the fan down, of course. And I used the hexagonal screws, but I'm not even sure if they were the right ones because later I found there were also screws that they labeled PSU with the case. So I might have used the wrong screws here, but it went in and it fits, so... And then it was cable time, which honestly this part took me the longest because I am someone who for the life of me can never remember the names of cables, so it took me such a long time. I literally just would separate all the cables and like say out loud like, okay, this is the 24 pin, this is the CPU, this is the fan. <laughs> And so it helps if you just take your time with this part and really make sure that you're
putting them in the right place. And these are the two system fans that came with the case. Yeah, as I said earlier, I didn't get any separate fans for this build. I just used the ones that came with the case. So after the main CPU cables were in and the fans were plugged in, I did the HDMI audio cable and then this USB 3, I think it's called. Yeah, there really is only one way to plug this in, but it did take quite a bit of force as well. And lastly were these front panel things. I already forgot the name of what these are called, but they're the front panel things that you have to look at the manual in order to install correctly. This part also took a long time because it was difficult to tell in the manual and for the one of them I had to flip it the other way around to make sure that the plus and the minuses were aligned. Um, so I just triple checked this to make sure it was all in correctly because they're super tiny. And then all that's left was just cable management, as they say. Um, this case is nice because there was a lot of space at the bottom where I could just kind of stuff things. Um, I took out the hard drive uh, container that they had at the bottom because I'm not using it at the moment and so all that space was just free for, for cable stuffing. Although I did, you know, kind of put it in neatly, I think, as you can see here. Um, and they give you a lot of twist ties and things with this case to make things neater in the back. So as far as cable management goes, I feel like this looks pretty good. <laughs> also, let me just say, I kind of hate these thumb screws. I can never manage to get them on or off with just my thumbs. Maybe I have like a weak finger grip, but isn't that the point to be able to just use your thumbs to screw them? So at this point, I just wanted to plug everything in to test that it worked and the cables were incorrectly and luckily it did. So that was a good sign. And you're probably wondering about the graphics card at this point, but as I said earlier, the graphics card took a while to come and I had to cancel one order and um, order it from somewhere else and it was a whole ordeal. So in the meantime, I just kind of finished my setup here, installed the monitor, installed some LED lights behind my desk, and someone graciously lent me their old graphics card. So as I was waiting for my graphics card, I used it to just install Windows and download drivers until my graphics card, here she is, finally arrived. So this is the MSI GeForce GTX 1650 Super. I never know how you're supposed to call graphics cards, like are you supposed to say the whole thing, or if I just say the GTX 1650S, people probably understand what I mean, but here it is. And as far as unboxings go, this was like the best unboxing. It was so nicely packaged and they even gave this little cute illustrated thing of how to install it and download the drivers which I thought was neat <laughs> but here it is I guess I should also mention at this point that I don't really plan on overclocking my PC although I have heard great things about um, overclocking the Ryzen 3 3100 I heard you can get a lot of good performance out of it but honestly I'm kind of scared of overclocking right now and if I ever were to I definitely would get a new CPU fan anyway here you can see me removing the old graphics card that I had borrowed from someone and installing mine making sure to take off this little tab thing that they use to cover the um, whatever it's called but honestly, I think I liked installing the graphics card the most. It's really satisfying when it clicks in. Okay, something I am curious about though, is that this is a six pin 
So they give you six additionally to, so eight if you need it. But why is there a second attached to this PCIe cable that also has eight pins? When it clicks in, mm, chef's kiss. And with that, this PC is pretty much done. Um, all I had to do was just plug in the monitor and plug in the ethernet cable, download, drivers, etc. Which I already did off screen, but um, there it is. I'm honestly so proud of the fact that I built this by myself and it works. <laughs> um, as I said, the theme was just getting the job done and this PC gets the job done, so here it is. I don't really have any benchmarks to show you, but here are some clips of me playing Genshin because this was the first thing I downloaded when I literally just turned on this PC. <laughs> yeah. But that was the video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you decide to build your first PC one day because you can do it. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching.